Okay, AI horns. There is quite a lot of setup with this, but when you've got the hang of it, it is quite easy to do. So I'm at Appleby on the Ita Akala line. It does create a um, standard scenario marker. I'm gonna plunk it in the track. This is for uh, demo purposes. Turn on my cursor capture. So call this. AI horns demo like a spell. So once we've made our demo scenario, first thing you need to do is press down a train. So for this demo I'm going to use the AP class one five six. I'm gonna pick any kind of livery, so let's go with this random one. We just so what's just that happens to me northern give it a driver okay next one to go into timetable view we can call this train AI on demo so that's the train don't send it to the player train because this will be it this will be an AI train get this something passenger make it leave at noon Next thing you want to do is open up the Sario folder because you'll be editing a Sario script in Lua that will trigger the AI horn to sound. So click open folder. This will bring up the folder with all your Sario files in it. Next one to do is open up VS Code. So cut this, cut your directory. Those you can shush. Okay, open folder. And sec folder. That will bring up everything inside it. Well, bring up all the files in this folder here. So on my PC, I have some boilerplate code in the sariosgroup.lua uh, file. So I've got to copy and paste this into my Sario folder and open it up here. So this, this, this is just some boilerplate code that every scenario will use, which I, that, which you can then build upon. So the scenario name, which is just a comment, which is optional. So AI on demo by me, then down here. So G is like a global variable that stores the environment variable in Lua. So we're gonna collapse all of these. Actually, we don't, actually don't need all these on events. So back in your scenario, so we can just make this AI train go to go to the next station, which will be Kirby Steven. Like so, make it non-reversible because it's going it's going in one direction. Then we, then we can create a trigger instruction, which will trigger an instruction at any specific time. So let's say after five seconds of the scenario starting. We can call it, you can call it anything you like, but it's helped if you make them very meaningful. So we can call it trigger high tone, as in the high horn tone. Like that, which will trigger five seconds after the scenario starts. So I'll go back into VS Code, we can call it function on event trigger high tone and end because. That's the syntax of um, Lua functions. So we make a system call, it's like a spell. Okay, so for our system call, we can use a player engine set control value. Of course, this isn't the player thing. This isn't the player train, this is the AI train, so we need to get the vehicle number, which is DMS 476, which is passive 156 476, which we can put in there. The control value, and I want the control value that controls the horn, which we will come into in a bit. The next parameter is zero, and then the last parameter is the value you want is the value you want it to have. Which could either be zero, minus one, or one, or any other value. 
depending on the control value. Set it to one. Okay, now we can go and find out how to get the trade's control values. Okay, first step to getting the trade's control values is you go go into your Steam account, go to TS Classic, right click on properties, then you, then in the bottom box at the bottom you need this um, parameter or launch option. So dash show controls dot dialog. It has to spell it exactly like that, otherwise it won't work. So what we're going to do now is hit play. Then immediately come out of the scenario. Because the thing about the show control step dialogue is that it only works in window mode. It won't work in borderless or full screen. So I'll go to settings, full screen, set that to windowed. And pick a resolution. For this I'm gonna just pick 1280 by 720. Click save, then when you press yes, TS will restart. But in window mode, you should have the control step dialog on the, the control step dialog box on the right. Okay, so once TS has reloaded, you should you should have this control this dialog box on the right. So I'll go back into our scenario. Go to the set our Carlisle, which is the route we're on, and click the AI horns demo. Edit and um, in order to get the control set dialogues, you need to click this so you can actually drive it and play around with the different dialogues. Not different, the um, different uh, control values. So that, that set that to driver. Well, when we finished scripting, we can take the um, driver icon unchecked, if that makes sense. So now we can press play and save. So I really one five six at uh, Applebee, and you can see all these control values on the right have some values like pixel break is at 0.75, which is step three, because the one five six has four breaks positions off the worth of two step three and um, emergency. But what, what what we are looking for is the value for the horn. <laughs> I can see what my cursor is, is this control value called horn. So if I press B for the high tone, sorry, low tone, press B for the low tone, the value goes to negative one. And for the high, the other tone, it goes to one for the low tone. So what we can do then is go back into our Sire script. So the vehicle number, set control value called horn, like a type. Set that to set that to minus one, and that will make the train produce a tone. Now, because it's set to minus one, we want it, we want it to get back, we want it to get back to zero, so the horn stops. Okay, now to create a deferred event, we can call it syscall. Uh, we want to look in the scenario manager object. At the trigger deferred trust one F and to us trigger deferred event function we can call it a horn low or we'll call it horn end and we can and we can trigger it say two seconds after scenario, after the event is called so create a function called horn end okay we use this syscall and put the minus one to a zero so the horn will stop um, sounding okay correction you want to call it on event horn end so reload and recompile press ok press play and we should hear the horn
and that is how you do AI horns. Of course this can be expanded upon and you can use multiple trigger defer events to sound different tones like a hot like a high tone and a low tone. So I got once it's called to sound the horn in the low tone, then a trigger defer event to sound the high tone or low tone. Or the other tone after two seconds and then four seconds after the start it will trigger the horn end. <clears throat> so I'll go back in here, reload, recompile and press OK and play. And we should get a high tone and a low tone. <laughs> So yeah, pretty easy to get your head around. I hope more people do um, AI, AI tones in the future. And we can just watch that 156 go into the distance. So this is the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, leave a comment if you want me to cover, cover anything else. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial.